It's been a privilege for the Crab family these last few years to travel across the country and tell people everywhere about the saving power of Jesus Christ. About 10 years ago, the Lord Jesus reached down in a gutter and picked up an old drunk, sobered him up, changed his life, and gave him a brand new future. I know that fella pretty good because I was the man. I went to AA meetings time after time, and I was going to prove to God I didn't need his help. That I'd do it all on my own. It seemed like it just got worse. My children, my family shed many tears over my condition. And I tried many times to break the chain that Satan had around me. But you know, sin will take you further than you intend to go. It'll keep you longer than you intend to stay, and it will cost you more than you intend to pay. I heard an old preacher say that one time, and it's the truth. I was running a car wash in Beaver Dam, Kentucky, and I was about to lose my business because I couldn't stay sober. I was bitter. I had so much hatred. I couldn't cry. Didn't want to be around church people. My, the people I sung to were not beautiful people like you, friendly people, loving people, kind people. My congregations were drunks. But that day in Beaver Dam, Kentucky, it rained. And on a rainy day, not too many people get their car washed. And I was just sitting there in my car wash. I didn't have anything to drink, any way to go get anything, and no money to get it with. And I was just sitting there thinking about what a horrible person I was, what a failure I'd been to my family. When all of a sudden, I heard a voice of someone that I didn't expect to show up. I didn't have any stained glass windows in my car wash. I didn't have a choir singing. I didn't even have a preacher there preaching to me. But I heard the sweetest voice, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. I heard the Lord say to me, I love you. I'll never forget that as long as I live. Tears started running down my face. And I started talking to him. And I said, Lord, I love you too. And I said, God, if you'll give me some peace. You see, the world says that's peace. I heard Tim Surratt say this the other night. The devil tells you the grass is greener on the other side. But he don't tell you there's a septic tank under that green grass. And I said to him, I said, Lord, if you'll give me some peace, let me feel peace in my heart. I want out of this prison. I said, I'll live for you for the rest of my life. And I'll sit on the back seat of a church somewhere and enjoy my peace for the rest of my life. And I meant that with all of my heart. He knows when you're praying from here, and he knows when you're praying from here. And, buddy, it was from here. I fell down on my knees, and I looked up to a merciful Lord. And I prayed a prayer, something like this. Lord, would you please forgive me? And immediately, the chains came off. The prison door came open. And Gerald Cram became a brand new man. By the grace of Almighty God. And I'm going to lift him up until I die. Some people don't understand why I get so excited about it sometimes. And I tell them this. I gave the devil 100%. I'm not going to cheat him out of anything. I wrote a song that... Uh, is my testimony. <laughs> Y'all excuse me. Woo. Feeling something up here. I sit down one day and I started writing these words down. My sleep is gone. My heart is full of sorrow and I can't believe how much I've let you down. I dread the pain that waits for me tomorrow when the sun reveals my broken dreams. 
scattered on the ground. I've been there many times. I put those words in my briefcase. Didn't even have a tune. About six months later, the Lord began to deal with me and said, you need to get that out and finish it. And this time, I don't want you to tell them where you've been, but I want you to tell them where you are right now. <laughs> That means happy about where you are right now. And I finished the song. And I sung it to my family. I always get to try my new songs out on them. And I want them to really act like they like them. And Jason said, I want to record that song. And, and Jason, Kelly, and Tara took it and recorded it. And immediately the song just got all kind of, of attention it went to number one. It stayed there for several months. And then it became the number one song of 1998. We saw over 1,700 people saved to the tune of Please Forgive Me in 1998. And I get so blessed every time something like that happens. But the greatest blessing, Scott, I get out of this song is when night after night I get to stand beside my youngins and watch them sing their daddy's testimony. How that the Lord reached way down, picked up an old drunk, saved him, changed him, made a new man out of him. And I've got good news for you. If he did it for me, he's just waiting to do it for you. Will you make my youngins welcome as they sing, please forgive you, please forgive me for you tonight. is gone the heart is full of sorrow I can't believe how much I've let you down I tread the pain that waits for me tomorrow but when the sun reveals my broken dreams scattered all
You know, thank God. There's probably some of you out there sitting or standing that's not right with the Lord. And you know by just singing that chorus and meaning it from the bottom of your heart that you can leave here a changed individual. So if you're in that shape, I want everybody to close their eyes. No music. Sing it with me. Please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. Sing it. All I have is you and that you mercy. Lord, I will serve you until my dying day. Help us. Sing it one more time. Please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. Lord, all I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Lord, I will serve you. Until my dying. Come on, give him a big old...